In this series, I'm showing you how to get the most out of Outlook using Python. In this video, we're going to expand on what we learned in the last when we created an HTML formatted email by learning how to attach files. Specifically, we're going to attach a gift certificate to the email and an image file, which will then embed into the email instead of linking to an online image. Once again, I'm going to be using IDLE, which comes packaged with Python. If you want to use IDLE, you simply go to your command prompt and type IDLE. Otherwise, you're free to use any other IDE or code editor that you wish. I'm going to be using the interactive shell because I want you to be able to see the changes as we're making them. So, without further ado, let's get started. A lot of the code is similar to the last video with a few significant changes. First, we're going to import Win32.com, but we're also going to import a standard library called Pathlib. Pathlib has a lot of convenience functions that help you handle file paths. When we attach a file in Outlook, we have to use the absolute path. What is the absolute path? Good question. The easiest way to explain is by demonstrating. In this image, I'm looking at a set of files that I've created for this video series. You can see that in the address bar, I've circled what is considered the absolute path. Most of the time, Python will allow you to directly reference files relative to the current working directory. So if I was working in the Outlook-Python folder, then I wouldn't need to specify the long string of directories leading up to Outlook Python. And the reason is because it's assumed that this is my starting reference point when using a file name. However, that does not work when using Win32 object model. You must use the absolute path. Fortunately, Pathlib gives us an easy way to retrieve that from the relative path. There are two local files that we're going to use for this project. I've included links to those files in the video description. The first is a birthday cake image. The second is an image of a gift certificate. Download those files and make sure they're in the same directory as the one you're currently coding in. To get the path of the files, we type in cake underscore path equals pathlib.path and then the name of the file, which is birthday-cake.jpg. The next file is cert underscore path equals pathlib.path, and then the name of the file is certificate.jfif. Now, if you type the variable name into the shell, you'll see that it's a Windows path object. This Windows path object has a method called absolute. Go ahead and type cake underscore path dot absolute. As you can see, this returns the full absolute path. However, it also returns it as a Windows path object. When we attach the file, it needs to be a string and not a Windows path object. No problem. Just wrap that in a string method and it will convert it to a string. So that will be cake underscore absolute equals string and then cake underscore path dot absolute. So we're basically wrapping that in the string method. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for certificate. Now that we have the absolute path of the files, we can create our HTML message and attach the files. Similar to before, we're going to create an Outlook instance, create a message, and then use the display method so that we can see what we're doing. Next, set the recipient with the to property, and then set the subject. Okay, now we're ready to attach the files. Let's first attach the certificate. Type in message.attachments.add and then we're gonna pass in cert underscore absolute as the argument. You can now see the attachment in the email. Next, we can attach the cake image, but we're going to have to handle this just a bit differently. Go ahead and type in image equals message.attachments.add and then cake underscore absolute. As you can see, we've saved a reference to the cake attachment. The reason is because we need to make a slight adjustment to one of its properties so that we can embed it into the email body. 
It's currently attached as you can see, but it's not yet embedded. Speaking of the email body, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the HTML body into the shell. I've included a link in the video description to the code that you can copy and paste into your example. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. You can see that pretty much all of this is exactly the same as in the prior example. Really the only difference is the source reference for the image. I'm using a content ID and the ID name is cake-image. Outlook will automatically assign a content ID to the attachments, so in order to make sure that my HTML body is connected to the content ID of that attachment, I need to change the content ID of the cake image attachment to match what is in the HTML body. And that's why I needed a reference to the attachment. Now what I'm going to do next is copy and paste some code that I'm going to use and I'll explain what it means after. What I've done here is use the property accessor of the image attachment to set the content ID property to cake-image. Now I know this looks a bit confusing, but all, of, all that's really happening is that I'm telling the property accessor which property I want to change with, with that reference in the first argument, and then what I want to change it to in the second argument. If you want to read more about this convoluted reference, I've included a link in the video description. Otherwise, just know that if you want to change the content ID, this is the code that you need to use. Okay. Now that the content ID has been changed, my HTML body will now reference the correct attachment. So with that, I can now set the HTML body property of this email. So let's do that now. And now we have an HTML formatted email with a certificate attachment and an embedded image. There was a lot going on in this video, but I hope you see how easy it is to add an attachment generally, and then really there's just one extra step to embed an image into the HTML body, and that's by adjusting the content ID. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use email templates. This is going to be very useful when you want to customize an email to send to multiple people, and it's an absolute necessity if you want to do any kind of customized bulk email. See you in the next video.